Hi guys, so I played my first homebrew game of Hero Quest just a few days ago. Went really well, no one died, a few came a little close, and yeah, everyone really enjoyed themselves. So obviously I've been using all the monsters from the Hero Quest set, as well as the uh, the boss mobs. Um, and obviously I've painted a few more of them up with the, uh, well, all the expansion sort of sets I've been buying and sticking them on clear bases. Uh, because I am doing homebrew games now, I really want to make up, well, use my own sort of bosses to go with, well, whatever homebrew game I can think of. So the best place I find to look for, uh, well, any kind of miniatures you're after is over at My Mini Factory and a company that I've used quite a lot of times and that's World Forge Miniatures. Uh, there's a link down below guys, go and check them out and as you'll be able to see, as well as doing miniatures, they do a whole variety of scatter terrain, bases and, well, full room designs, which is absolutely awesome. And if you join their tribe, you get 50% off everything on their store, which is just amazing. So the ones that I've been looking at, they um, they do produce some stuff every month, which is just great. And this month they produce Shadowdale Church Collection, which is, well, a whole church, uh, which is just amazing. Obviously, great looking on the outside and on the inside. But it's the miniatures I'm really after, as they've got this lovely skeleton king and a vampire lord. So they're going to be my main sort of bosses this time, as well as a vampire hunter which would make for a great uh, a great hero class. So as you can see, printed them out, primed in black, dry brushed white, ready for a good old bit of slap chopping, speed painting. And as this is a king and a lord, I'm going to try and keep all the colours I use, well, kind of like regal colours. So yeah, definitely plenty of gold, silver, purples and blues. Anything that makes them look, well, like royalty, I guess. And this is kind of what I love about games like Hero Quest and Dungeons and Dragons. Um, yeah, doing homebrew, you really can put your own twist on everything and make things more suitable and fun for the kind of players you're playing against. As I say, so I'm playing hopefully regularly every month with some friends, um, but obviously I have played this, this game a couple of times with my children. So that's the great thing, this game can be made more intense, more difficult, more harder, um, or can be played, well, exactly like a kind of a board game that it is, which is just great. So I can't give any details sort of about these guys or about the campaign that I'm currently working on. Um, I say we played a game two, well, yeah, about two, three days ago, and we've got our next one in just under four weeks. So I've got four weeks to, well, start printing, planning, and getting everything ready for the next quest. Um, and yeah, some of the stuff I'm going to be making and building and showing you guys. Uh, but again, won't obviously give away too many details because yeah, I don't want to spoil it for the uh, well for the guys and girls that are going to be playing. Although, as you can see, the two main bosses, the Skeleton King and the Vampire Lord, yeah, it's going to be a very undead kind of campaign quest one-shot, whatever you may want to call it. So, yeah, I've been using the yeah, the figures and miniatures from World Forge uh, miniatures for quite a while. There's a few other videos you'll see of me using their, their stuff. And I say, it really is great that they do so much sort of scatter terrain uh, for inside buildings. Well, like that being said, they obviously, like in this one, they do the whole church. They do a whole variety of, well, building interiors and floors, which is just awesome. I'm not sure if you can hear in the background at all, but I actually got me a laser engraver going as I am, well, I was about to say 3D printing, but obviously it's not 3D printing, it's laser engraving stone floor tiles. Um, yeah, which is really cool, so a video of that coming out very soon. So as you can see, these miniatures by Worldful Miniatures, yeah, there's certainly plenty of detail on them, which is just awesome because that makes the, uh, the slap chop paints uh, work so much better. The more detail and definition in the miniature, yeah, definitely the more nooks and crannies there are for all this lovely paint to sort of pull up in and get the darker areas and the lighter areas. So as you can see, yeah, I'm, I've got these on the, uh, the red grass sort of miniature holders with a bit of blue tack, although as you can see, it clearly doesn't look blue anymore. Um, the great thing with that is, yeah, you can just pull these things off easy enough just to be able to paint, well, the underneath um, and any areas you can't get to normally. So yeah, these obviously are going to be um, put on clear bases because, well, I'm sure by now you know I love clear bases. As I love seeing, well, exactly what sort of terrain is underneath them. And that's not to say I don't like bases, uh, but I only generally make bases when I'm making sort of small dioramas or making miniatures up and painting them that I'm not going to be using in any kind of board game. Um, yeah, so if they're just sitting on my desk, then yeah, I'll go to town and have a lovely sort of base on it with grass or rocks or whatever it may, may need. Uh, but yeah, any of these miniatures I'm going to be using, all the bases, they rather get printed like this without a base. Or the Hero Quest miniatures you would have seen, or like you saw at the very beginning, um, yeah, I cut the bases off. And I've got another video coming soon 
with the uh, the miniatures from Zombicide. Uh, and you again, you'll see me cutting the bases off them because I want them to have nice clear bases so I can see that lovely terrain that's underneath. So yeah, these guys, obviously paint them together, which is great because uh, they are obviously going to be in the same campaign. So I want them pretty much to be the same sort of look, style and colours. Um, and that's why, yeah, both of them are going for very similar colours and very regal sort of looking. Although this skeleton's boots, um, yeah, they're certainly not very regal. They are, they've been lived in and yeah, I think you could do some new shoes here. So obviously there's a lot of silver and gold on these. Um, and like I always say, with the speed paints, yeah, the coverage goes on beautifully. Uh, but they don't have quite the same sort of pooling effect as all the other paints. So we can remedy that with a bit of a wash, which should be coming up very soon. Uh, yeah, obviously this is good old vampire, good old Dracula or whatever. Although this guy is actually called Alistair. Um, yeah, Alistair the Vampire. Uh, so yeah, good old uh, black hair with that little sort of pointy bit at the front, which is just going to be awesome. So, so yeah, this campaign, again, not going to give too much away, but yeah, clearly it is going to be an undead one, which I just love. So down in the dungeons or the crypts, yeah, this is definitely going to be a nice spooky feel to it. And I may need to get a, uh, the fog machine out uh, and maybe play that or use that when I'm playing, uh, playing the game. Just a bit of added atmosphere. So that's them nearly done, just a bit of skin to do, well, say skin, as you can see the skeleton, yeah, he doesn't really have any skin, so uh, not a lot to do with him. Uh, but a vampire, I don't want to use normal skin colour because, well, this dude doesn't get out in the sun, so he needs to have a very dark, pale looking skin. Um, so yeah, this skin seemed to be very appropriate for him. Well, he has got a nice little six pack going on here, so yeah, he definitely gets down the gym, maybe his own little gym, for a good old workout. Anyway guys, I hope you're enjoying the videos, don't forget if you are new here and you like what I do, hit that subscribe button, turn on the bell, and share, like, leave comments, all that great stuff, and that does help promote my videos to other people who may want to watch them, enjoy them, and, well, rinse and repeat, share, like, subscribe, all that great stuff. Anyway, that's enough of a plug, let's get back to the video, and I say, yeah, doing the, uh, the wash, um, any kind of wash will do, I guess, but I like to use a lighter brown wash. I have tried using like a black wash and always found it to be, well, it makes things look dirty rather than um, sort of like aged. So yeah, good old soft brown wash here. As always, yeah, I just chuck this stuff on, move it around. Um, and again, it's, it's doing it to your own preferred sort of taste. Um, well, I am getting better now. If you watch my old videos, you will see I actually cake miniatures in washes. This is before I used speed paints. Um, whereas now, yeah, I'm, well, I like to think I'm a little bit better. Um, I put loads on, but then I do kind of like move it around, spread it about a bit, so it's, uh, yeah, not as thick and dark as, uh, well, when it first goes on. So, yeah, good old skeleton. Um, so he printed really, really well. Obviously, uh, got some small little bits here, the old legs and that. Everything's pre-supported from, um, from uh, World Forge Miniatures. You can get them unsupported, but obviously, yeah, I'm going to get everything pre-supported. And everything just peels off a treat. So don't forget to check out the link down below, guys. Um, and say they do a whole range of miniatures and the terrain, and yeah, they are definitely my first port of call for bits and pieces that I may need. Especially now, I say I am doing hero quest, homebrew quests, missions, one shots, whatever you may want to. And that's them just about done, and yeah, put on some clear bases. So I get mine from Fluid 3D Workshop, and these are 25mm bases, 1mm thick, so yeah, nice and thin which means you really can see the other uh, bases underneath. Um, so yeah, guys, when it comes to glue, a lot of you guys keep asking what glue I use. Whatever glue I've got. Um, obviously, if you do get the glue on the base, it will make a mess of it. So yeah, use it sparingly on the feet, um, and then yeah, you can't see the glue. But as you can see, yeah, so when these miniatures are standing on the terrain, yeah, you can hardly see the bases at all, which makes the figures look like they're, well, just standing up, which is just awesome. Anyway guys, hope you liked the video, there's another one on the screen, give that a click, see more of what I do, and I'd love it if you can share, subscribe, leave comments down below, let me know what you thought of this video, and what you may want to see me do in the future. Okay guys, you all take care, I'll see you in the next one, bye for now.